This video is sponsored by World of Warships, a free-to-play naval warfare game available for PC. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are out at sea for months on end and have to withstand intense storms. Huge waves relentlessly crash against the sides of the ship, and the wind howls across the flight deck. Despite these hostile conditions, this jet has to land safely on the heaving deck. An almost impossible task, but not for the seasoned pilots of the American Navy. There have been brutal accidents in the past in situations like these, with storms transforming the deck into an unpredictable, wildly gyrating platform. The question lingers, how do these fighter jets manage to land safely amidst the fury of nature on an aircraft carrier in tempestuous seas? But today, we are going to crack that mystery. How do fighter jets safely land in rough seas on an aircraft carrier? First, let's get a grip on the weather at sea. It can be extreme and varies depending on location, season, and weather patterns. The biggest threat at sea are tropical storms and hurricanes, with winds whipping up to 73 miles an hour and pelting rain. One infamous storm was Typhoon Cobra in 1944, with winds gusting up to 150 miles per hour. It caused considerable damage to the USS Monterey. Another danger are rogue waves, also known as freak or monster waves. They're much larger than usual, often materializing without warning and pose a serious threat. They can tower to 100 feet or more, often whipped up by ocean currents or colliding waves. These are just a few of the challenges pilots face while attempting to land a fighter jet at sea. But guess what? There is an unsung variable that makes all of this even more complicated. And it's not what you think. Let's dive a bit deeper into that. An aircraft carrier's operations heavily rely on the sea state, which describes the ocean's wave height and frequency. In a calm sea state with waves less than one meter high, takeoffs and landings proceed smoothly. However, when the sea state intensifies with high waves and strong winds, it becomes increasingly challenging for aircraft to operate. Waves taller than about three meters can cause the carrier to pitch and roll uncontrollably, jeopardizing the pilot's control of their aircraft. Adding to the complexity is fog at sea, a natural phenomenon when moist air rising from warm water condenses into tiny droplets upon meeting cooler air. This thick mist can reduce visibility to mere feet, making navigation a challenge and potentially hazardous. Landing amidst these hostile conditions resembles a controlled crash, a scenario that would decimate most other airplanes. Interestingly, weather conditions once saved our aircraft carriers during the attack on Pearl Harbor. On December 7th, two U.S. Navy aircraft carriers, the USS Enterprise and the USS Lexington, were absent from Pearl Harbor due to harsh weather conditions. This delay inadvertently saved them from the Japanese attack, demonstrating yet again the powerful role weather plays in naval operations. The Challenges of Landing on a Moving Runway Before we delve deeper into the challenges, I'd like to mention that this video is sponsored by World of Warships, a free-to-play naval warfare game available for PC. You can conquer the oceans aboard history's most iconic battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers, and submarines. Breathtaking recreations of not just the most fearsome vessels of the First and Second World Wars, but also many blueprints and designs of ships that never saw battle. The game has new content released every month, and this month only you can go to battle as characters from Azure Lane and show off your favorite characters with the new Azure Lane themed skins. There are more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather, all of which have been updated with stunning new water effects and textures that make the game's seas virtually indistinguishable from the real deal. Oh, did we mention the game is also available on consoles? Join the action in-game along with an active and engaged community downloading the game in the first link in the description. During registration, use the promo code AZUR555, that's A-Z-U-R-555, to receive a huge starter pack, including 500 doubloons, 2,500,000 credits, 5 days premium account time, 
one premium container, and both Azure Lane Commanders Cheshire and Azuma. All right, let's move on. Now, let us get to the specifics of how a landing actually works. Aircraft carriers have been a vital component of the U.S. Navy since World War II. Despite the fact that launching and landing fighter jets on a ship still to this day remains a challenging task. Quite ironic, right? Especially when considering that it's the most basic and important function of a carrier. Note that one of the primary challenges is the extremely limited runway space on the decks of these mobile machines, along with the horrible weather conditions we've discussed. As a result of these challenges, engineers have been forced to develop powerful systems to accelerate and decelerate aircraft in a very short period of time. To take utmost advantage of the short runways, aircraft carriers have angled runways. These allow for simultaneous takeoffs and landings. The angled runway is positioned off-center from the ship's centerline, typically at a 10 to 14 degree angle. This design allows aircraft to take off and land on the carrier's deck at the same time, which increases the carrier's operational efficiency and effectiveness. Before the angled runway was introduced, aircraft carriers had a straight runway that ran the length of the ship. However, this design had limitations in terms of the number of aircraft that could take off and land at the same time. With a straight runway, aircraft could only take off and land one at a time, which slowed down the carrier's operations, making for a pretty unideal situation, especially when war strikes. The Navy currently uses Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, which are typically 1,094 feet in length and have deck space of approximately 4.5 acres, the size of four football fields. Below deck, the ship holds up to 80 aircraft, 6,250 people, two nuclear reactors, and all the supplies needed for missions that can last several months at a time. In order for the aircraft carrier to act as a true traveling, or should we say floating, airport, the pilots and crew rely on three key elements to launch and land the aircraft safely. First, four catapults are specifically developed to launch planes at high speeds. Second, a lighting system known as the Fresnel lens or the meatball system lets a pilot know if the plane has the correct altitude and position when approaching to land. Lastly, four arresting cables are in place to bring the plane to a rest in less than 320 feet. Pretty neat, right? The landing procedure starts when the various returning planes stack up in a huge oval flying pattern near the carrier. The Carrier Air Traffic Control Center below deck decides the landing order of the waiting planes based on their various fuel levels, so a plane that's about to run out of fuel comes down before one that can keep flying for a while. When it's time for a plane to land, the pilot breaks free of this landing pattern and heads towards the stern of the ship. Landing Signal Officers, or LSOs, help guide the plane in through radio communication as well as a collection of lights on the deck. If the plane is off course, the LSOs can use radio commands or illuminate other lights to correct the trajectory or wave him off, which means to send a pilot around for another attempt. In addition to the LSOs, pilots look to the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, common referred to as the lens for landing guidance. The lens consists of a series of lights and Fresnel lenses mounted to a gyroscopically stabilized platform. The lenses focus the light into narrow beams that are directed into the sky at various angles. The pilot will see different lights depending on the plane's angle of approach. If the plane is right on target, the pilot will see an amber light dubbed the meatball in line with a row of green lights. If the amber light appears above the green lights, the plane is coming in too high. If the amber light appears below the green lights, the plane is coming in too low. This intricate system making use of lights essentially serves as a helping hand when pilots approach the landing strip. As the pilot approaches the carrier, they must carefully align their aircraft with the deck and navigate through the turbulent winds. Even most skilled pilots struggle to land. The high wind causes the aircraft to sway and even flips it over, while the rough seas cause the carrier to pitch and roll, making it difficult to maintain a steady course but the job must be done. 
The touchdown and subsequent deceleration caused by the arresting wires are the most dangerous parts for pilots during the landing maneuver. Successfully executing this requires great skill and the ground crew must avoid any errors throughout the operation. Before touchdown, the pilot lowers a tail hook, a long metallic bar that hangs just inches above the carrier's surface. When the aircraft lands, the hooked end of the tail snags one of the four arresting cables, bringing the aircraft to a quick stop. Although the cables are simple in structure, there is a significant risk of something going wrong. Experienced pilots aim for the second or third cables, as hitting one of these cables will prevent them from running into the back of the carrier while also allowing room for takeoff if needed. Once the wheels touch the deck, the pilot immediately pushes the aircraft to full throttle to ensure that if the tail hook misses the arresting wires, the aircraft can still have enough speed to quickly take off again at the end of the runway. The arresting wires use a pulley system running through a piston below deck to slow down the hooked aircraft. Landing a jet is definitely not a one-man's job. It's indeed a coordinated effort. Although the danger is always prevalent, extensive training and practice make these types of catastrophes rare, proving the competence of the US Navy. Anyway, if everything goes right and the arresting cable is engaged, the cable is pulled out through the deck and subsequently slows the plane down. Operated by pulley systems, both ends of the cable meet up with a piston inside a cylinder running parallel beneath the deck wires above. The cylinders are filled with a varying amount of fluid depending on the weight of the aircraft. As the wire is pulled, the pistons move through the tube, slowly forcing the fluid out of the cylinder. The force from the fluid slows down the initial tug on the pistons, which in return slows down the arresting wires and the attached plane. Now here's a quick question. Are you familiar with the expression, I have the ball, in context with landing an aircraft? If so, let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to download the World of Warships game using the link in the description. Breakage of an arresting cable By now, we understand that in the vast activity of naval operations, where precision and split-second decisions are crucial, the flight deck of a US Navy aircraft carrier stands with controlled chaos atop. We've gone through the numerous systems and technologies applied to ensure the safety and efficiency of aircraft landings. However, there are rare moments when the unexpected strikes, threatening to disrupt the delicate balance of carrier operations. Even though the arresting cable system is a crucial part of the safe and secure landing of aircraft, things can and do go wrong out in the ocean. Though a rare occurrence, there have been a few instances in history. It was December 1981. A tragic incident occurred on the flight deck of the USS John F. Kennedy when an arresting cable broke as an A-7E Corsair bomber was attempting to land. Barricade Webbing System In situations where a normal dependent arrest cannot be executed, an emergency recovery system known as a barricade is utilized. Typically, the barricade is stowed away and only deployed when required. To rig the barricade, stanchions are raised from the flight deck to support the net, which is then stretched across the deck. This allows the barricade to act as a safety measure in case the normal landing procedure fails. Rigging the barricade is a task that U.S. carrier flight deck personnel routinely practice. A well-trained crew can complete the task in under three minutes. The pilots who are capable of landing fighter jets on a carrier deck in rough seas demonstrate an exceptional level of skill and bravery. They are among the most highly trained and skilled individuals in the aviation industry, having acquired a unique set of skills and experience through rigorous training and practice. These pilots not only face the inherent risks of flying a high-performance aircraft, but they must also navigate the unpredictable movements of a carrier deck in rough seas. Their impressive precision, control, and ability to adapt to changing conditions are truly remarkable. We owe a great deal of gratitude to these pilots who put their lives on the line to ensure the safety and security of our nation. Their unwavering dedication and commitment to excellence are truly deserving of our utmost respect and appreciation.
From the intense training of the pilots to the advanced technology of the aircraft and carriers, everything about this process is designed to ensure the safety and success of each mission. As we discussed the remarkable skills that pilots need to land fighter jets, it is worth noting that turbulence poses a significant challenge for both pilots and passengers on commercial flights. Have you ever encountered heavy turbulence on a plane? Such an experience can evoke varied emotions ranging from anxiety and fear to discomfort and nausea. Tell us about your experience in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, and if you loved it, then please subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll be showing us your support, which we truly appreciate and cherish. Keep an eye out as we continue to bring more entertaining and educational content on the US Navy and other maritime topics. So hit that bell icon so you will receive a notification every time we post a new video. Thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring this video and don't forget to download the game using the first link in the description. Thanks for sticking around till the end and we'll catch you in the next one.